I like Timberlane because they're good teachers and they help us a lot. I like Timberlane because um, I've been here since kindergarten. It's kind of like a family. It's um, everybody's so nice and it's just so unique and fun. I like Timberlane because we have rules in Timberlane. Timberlane is special because it's fun and you can learn lots of stuff. Well, I like it because the um, all-round calendar because no one else is doing it and everyone in like on my baseball team and everything, they're like, wow, that's so cool. You go to Timberlane, you got that cool calendar and everything. Timberlane is special because it's the only year-round school. Uh, I think they want to make Timberlane special because like we're like a community of caring and responsible and we um, respect other people. Well, Timberlane is a school that has a very multicultural and diverse population, both ethnically and economically. Uh, we have about 560 students, all the way from the ages of 2 to 13. We have students from over 60 countries who speak uh, as many as 20 different languages, depending on the home. Timberlane are so funny. We were, we're just now getting done with the SOLs and they're walking down to see me in the cafeteria and they look at me and they say, the SOLs were fun. And I look at them and I think, come on, you know. And, and so what I'm hearing the students always tell me is, okay, if that's a value, if learning's the focus, that's what we stand for. And we're in. And I just haven't seen a school like that. I, you know, where, where someone would walk down the hall and said, we love taking the test. And I don't think they were joking. I think we found a way to make the rigor of learning fun. And I think the students reflect that in the way that they focus. Um, I think they reflect that in the way that they laugh. Um, I think they reflect that in the way that they work cooperatively. Why don't you pick one and review it and you pick one you remember liking. It doesn't have to be one you read this year. Just one you want to recommend to them. I have an outstanding staff. This staff is so devoted to teaching the total child that many of my staff members will do home visits and, and have a better understanding of what the child is talking about because they've been in the homes and, and seen their bedrooms and talked with them about their toys and, and seen what they mean when they go out and play in the street, that it really is a safe cul-de-sac. Um, the staff is here forever. They need to go home more and they, um, they really try to match exactly where the children are by lots of small group uh, opportunities and lots of individualized support and by targeting students who need specific support during the intercession classes. Um, they're an enthusiastic staff and they want hands-on learning and they want students to see relationships and make connections. Timberlane went to a modified school calendar, which we call a 45-15 single track. And that means that the students come to school one month earlier than most kids in the county. So they come August 2nd, and they stay in school for nine weeks, then they have a three-week break, then they go in school for nine weeks again, three-week break, nine weeks, three weeks, and the cycle continues. And we consider the philosophy the continuous learning model so that children don't have a lot of long stretched out downtime, that they have reinforcement during those breaks if they want to. And about 80% of our kids come to Timberlane to take intercession classes during those three week uh, breaks so that they get enrichment and extension and remediation as they need it. I like going to school all year, all year round because I get more learning done. Yeah, I do like coming all year round. It's, it works out very well, the, we get breaks so we don't get too tired out. Coming back in August helps us get a, helps us get a head start on learning. And um, it's important because the more learning, the better jobs people get in the future and the better education people get. Well, it helps me a lot like in my work and at school. And it's really fun. I like to have a break once in a while 
because um, every nine weeks, and we don't lose as much over the summer because it's shorter, so that's good too. I like to come to school because it's fun and you get to learn more things that you don't know. We have intercessions, and at intercessions we can go to any class we want and learn about stuff. The community wanted the modified school calendar because they really felt that the summertime was not productive time. And we even have data that supports that, that students were losing information over the summers. So the community talked about it for almost two years and debated it and, and questioned it and delved into it. And then ultimately, as we surveyed everyone, realized this was where we wanted to go. It was not an imposed program. We invented it, or so we thought. There's 3,000 other schools nationwide doing it, but as far as Fairfax County goes, we felt very uniquely like it matched our neighborhood desires and our students' needs. Um, whether it's the future of education or not for Fairfax County is really up to each community. Uh, I'm not sure that it's necessarily something we should say, we'll all be doing this now. Timberlane's the first school to start a modified school calendar, and right now I've got about six or seven other schools asking me to teach them a little bit about the modified school calendar, so there's interest in expanding it. Uh, but each community, I think, really needs to look at them selves to decide if that's the right match for their lifestyle. Um, it's not necessarily something we want to impose on people. Timberlane is absolutely modified school calendar until we're told otherwise. It's not a pilot, it's not an experiment, we've researched it and now that we've begun it and we're seeing the, the happiness and satisfaction from parents, we're real sure that we're going to continue it. Opening day was so exciting because uh, the students were thrilled to be coming back to school. I was wondering what the faces of the parents would be like and I saw them sort of skipping down the sidewalk saying, here they come. And, uh, and there were no tears and, and the children cheered at the opening ceremony and, and felt special because they knew that, that they had a, a teaching staff and a parent community that wanted them focused on learning. One of the things we were concerned about at Timberlane was what would the siblings do who were in the junior high or middle school and high school environments while their younger siblings were in the modified school calendar. And so I sort of very casually said, well, you're welcome to come to the school and volunteer if you'd like to. Forty seventh through twelfth grade students came to Timberlane every single day, all day, to help. We weren't even prepared for all the help we got. And they were assigned to specific classrooms, they helped with bulletin boards, they helped type stories for, for children who could think fluently but couldn't pound it out on a computer fast enough. And they helped students with reading, they were buddies to students who needed a little tutorial service. When the September 8th came and they had to go to school, the teachers fell apart saying, what will I do without my 7th through 12th grade volunteer? <laughs> it was excellent. I've helped with basically every grade. I've cut papers, worked with kids, read to them, taught them new games. I've delivered messages, copied, basically everything a teacher needs help with. If I come here and help, I know it'll make a difference because I know that at least I can go and, and help other kids to see what they need help in. Like, for instance, I was helping this little girl um, rewrite her story, see if it made sense. Just her bibliography and to help her spell words that she didn't know how to spell and stuff like that. And while Mr. Spaghetti is over there teaching them something else, I can be helping each one, at least one at a time. It just feels good to know that you're helping the kids learn and process faster and it, sh it shows a big achievement. I think it speaks volumes that a 7th through 12th grade child would choose to be in a school in the month of August all day every day. It says something to me. And, and the fact that they would want to contribute and want to be helpful and feel a sense of need and a, a sense of accomplishment that they helped somebody and that they have something academic to offer um, and that they had almost an adult role. They even had a funny little feeling as they were walking down the hallway. They walked more with a can of Coke in their hands like they were in the faculty lounge, you know. <laughs> they kind of identified themselves as faculty members. So it was a real sense of empowerment for them. Everybody get that one? Yes. yes. Okay. Ooh. Twelve, the diagram below illustrates new. G, light travel, the street path. Yes. The academic program at Timberlane is rigorous. And uh, the beauty of it is 
that because we have nine week intensive quarters, all the students and all the teachers are very focused on what the quarterly themes will be, what the objectives are, what the goals are, and how we're going to assess the attainment of those objectives. And the kids are a part of the assessment process, and the teachers are very clear with kids what they're looking for, so there's no ambiguity about the goals. And then after that rigor, we have the intercession classes where we can do a lot more right brain stuff, we can do a lot more of the fun stuff, we can be more physical. Um, and so we feel like at least every quarter we're really letting our hair down and having a great time learning. But during those quarters, we're intense and we're focused. It's really important to combine rigor with fun because what we know about learning is that the brain can only cognitively focus when emotionally it's engaged in the learning. So when fun is a part of the learning, then the emotional part of the brain is saying go thinking side of the brain. And so we can blend emotions with thought more intensely when they're both together. sessions, students are offered a variety of classes, all the way from karate to uh, camping, we've gone on camping trips, to an architecture class where the children have built many cities with a professional architect, uh, where we're, we offer students the opportunity to really experience the colonial days, because sometimes we're so rigorously studying Virginia history, we don't make the candles and enjoy all the aspects of the colonial days. Uh, the variety of classes in the inner sessions um, taps into student interests. We go around to each of the classes and hear from the students what they want to learn. And they even come up with some stuff that I never would have thought of that's like, let's study ancient China. And I'm like, excuse me? Why did you pick that? And they really genuinely want to. So we fill a class up with students who want to study ancient China. We have a lot of interest in physical classes, which says to me that parents and students alike want to be more physical. Um, and, and so the intercessions have a combination of remediation, they have a combination of extension of learning that's related to the SOLs, and they have um, a flair for um, enrichment in an arena that we'd never be able to, because we don't have the time to, teach. They're getting the chance to take classes and courses that they would never get a chance to see. We've got horses coming in for the pet care class. They got to go to the animal shelter and see the, all the animals that have been rescued. Uh, we have guest speakers coming into all the classes. These are experiences these students would never get any other time. The intercessions are optional, and that some parents do a, a combination of things. They might take one or two of the intercessions, but not the third. They might come half a day, but not stay the whole day. Um, they might take the whole day because they really want their child to have both a physical morning, but yet maybe an intensive reading afternoon, or vice versa. <laughs> Eighty percent of our students participate in intercessions. Every single class is hands-on. Um, there is not reading and writing. Even our remedial classes are project-based. They are learning by applying the skills. I will again use cooking as the example. They're having to measure. If they're doing a recipe for four people and they're going to be serving 24, they have to know how to increase all the ingredients. They have to learn how to time when to start everything cooking so it all gets done at the same time so that it's all hot and prepared. Um, we have an architect class where they're learning math and measurement and scaling, where they're building a city. Pre-med, they actually are bringing in different organs and they actually feel the organs, they dissect the organs, and they learn about where they appear on the body and actually put them on skeletons that they're building as the weeks go on. So everything's project-based, ending with big um, showcases at the end of the two weeks. We have teachers from the community. We have some parents that are teaching. The person who taught camping is one of our own Timberlane parents who's also involved in the Girl Scouts. Teacher teaching the cooking class is, again, a parent who subs in our building. We also have some of our own Timberlane teachers teaching. We have grad students from George Mason that have come and taught. Two professors from the technology department of Mason have taught each intercession, volunteering their own time and not being paid for it. We get them from all over. It's people that are interested and they come up with their own curriculums. And if it matches the interests of the students, we offer it. March, March.
what we're finding happening is that the kids are so excited about the intercessions and all the hands-on projects they're doing that many of the classroom teachers are now starting to incorporate that into their classrooms, either from what the students have learned in the intercession, they're starting to try to pull that into their regular class, or they're starting to do some projects like our third graders were learning all about Egypt. They built pyramids out of um, sugar cubes. They made little miniature mummies. They made faces of Pharaoh. So they were doing hands-on projects to learn all about the Egyptian culture. As you go from room to room and see them totally engaged and totally engrossed in what they're doing, they don't even look up, they don't see you come in, or if they see you come in, they come running up to you, look, look, look what I've done, look what I've done, or like the pre-med class, did you know that the brain's got veins going through it and that's how you get oxygen? That's when you know it's been a success. What are you measuring? What's the point of your comparison? Um, I measured that the bottom one went the farthest, okay. and the top one didn't um, went not the least farthest. Yeah. So this one projected farther out, and this one fell more directly down. How does this apply to real life? Um, like a flood. It. Um, I have pictures of right here. Right. Um, it just shows the water pressure. Okay. And how, how impacting a flood can be. The Science Fair is a trademark of Timberlane. We're very proud of our, our years of science fairs and our projects keep getting better and better. And the students understand the scientific method beautifully and then they apply it and have to have an end product that shows from beginning to end every step of the scientific process. We have judges from the Nova uh, Community College, parents who are currently in science or engineering, um, science uh, curriculum specialists come over and we are the people who interview the students and we delve into what they know and what they went through as scientists to demonstrate what they learned in their scientific process. The science fair is an annual project that we have every spring and it is for students who are in grades K through 6 who may enter science fair projects. It is mandatory for our students in grades 4 through 6 and we suggest that the students and teachers in grades three do a class project together so that the students can learn the scientific method. Children learn how to start a science fair project from the question that they have, and then they learn to research the scientific principles behind the question that they have, form a hypothesis, and go through the experiment stage with observations and learning how to present the results of their observations in graphs and using photographs and then going on to complete it with a conclusion and stating their results. And their conclusions can be different from the hypothesis that they have posed, but it always goes back to the research that they have completed for it. We also use our science fair to showcase for our parents and community members the higher order thinking skills of our students as they learn the scientific method. What we are hoping that this will do is to strengthen the student's ability and understanding of scientific principles and also give them a thinking pattern using a scientific method for problem solving. My data didn't support my hypothesis and I thought they were going to pick the orange block yeah. as their favorite color and I wonder why they picked the red block. One of the reasons that we go into the community and get our judges is because we want our children to realize that in our own home school community we have many scientists as mothers and fathers out there. We also go into our Fairfax County science departments and math departments so that these people will really see what our students are doing as well as be able to offer suggestions to our students when they're going through the oral interview process during the judging. 
the students, if they cannot pose questions that they have about their everyday environment and be able to tie it back to science, because science is in everything that children do, then we need to strengthen that idea for building science, scientists in the future. And then, of course, we're also asking the students to begin to think much more deeply than just at the surface level and to analyze and use those critical analysis and problem-solving skills that they're going to need in the education of the future. It's important to get the community involved because we have a very multicultural community, a community coming from diverse backgrounds. It's an opportunity, I think, for us all to come together and realize that we share one thing in common, which is our children, and you know that, that being a part of their school and a part of their lives uh, is something that all parents share in common, regardless of where you came from or you know where you live. Parent involvement is important because it is proven that it, it improves the academic achievement of the child. The benefits for the students, for their parents to be involved, is that they feel connected. It feels like it's an extension uh, of their lives. Most of the students here, when they see a mother or a father, or if they volunteer for a field trip or, or some activity in school, they feel very proud and they just beam. And uh, parents should be connected with their children's education and be a partner of their children's education. And I think in the um, minority families, in our mi uh, they, that is not a concept that they have embraced. They, that's a foreign concept to them, and that's what we try to do. You have rights. You can make a difference. You can request. You can, um, you can be involved. Are you ready to dance? The family dance allows our community to come together as a community. We encourage parents, brothers, sisters, um, and they can also bring a guest to come together. We have a DJ that has been to every dance. Um, he plays a wide variety of music, takes requests. Um, we do the a hula contest, limbo. It's just a lot of fun, the electric slide. It's just a lot of fun for the kids and their parents. You'll see a lot of parents out there dancing on the floor with their children. And then we do some concession sales and some other things as a part of that. But primarily, it's just an opportunity for the whole community to come together and just have a good time. A lot of the families, that's the highlight of the year. They love to come and dance with the children, and they just enjoy that activity a lot. Last year, we had a support group for a lot of the mothers that were in crisis. We have a group of mothers that help with the closed closet because we have a closed closet here in school open um, during the day to anyone. And where I sit, I always um, tell them that that is their room and feel free to come in at any time. And um, we have gone to great lengths to make it as homey as we can possibly make it. Oh, Timberlane is unique because we are a family and that's we help each other we support each other and there is a sense of family I think it's it's welcoming atmosphere more than anything else I mean it's one of the uh, you walk into the school from the front desk staff and beyond and you just feel comfortable and welcome I mean, it, that that I think is that sort of sums it up for me. I've gone into other schools in Fairfax County where it just wasn't that same sort of, hi, welcome to Timberlane feeling that, I, that you really do get here. I think the one thing that makes Timberlane such a unique school is that it is a community. It is a community of learners. It is a community of people that come together to support each other. It is a community of people, students, teachers, parents, that are all feeling connected and that through this connection are empowered to do and be the best that we can be. 
I, I think Timberlane is a unique school because the community is a very active, um, engaged, nurturing, total part of the educational process. And that it's always in dialogue about being better. We believe all children can and will learn. And that their background does not affect their ability to learn. We believe that parents want and deserve the best education for their children and that they deserve our full support in co-educating their child or children. We believe that we are all learners and that our students are also our teachers. We believe in educating the whole child, which includes each student intellectual, physical, emotional, psychological, and social development. We believe that we live on this earth not to see through one another, but rather to see one another through.